The party had set up camp only two days prior to reaching Makardika, and Healthiest toiled toward some way that Kimrim and Govin could be spared from their journey to meet with Emperor Craven Drac. Together with Ian Fear, the two examined the Emperor's writ closely. Healthiest then approached Kimrim and Govin, who asked that he watch over Govin's son Darkul and reassured him that they would be along to Shopbin just a few weeks after the party's arrival there. Two days passed, and the friends entered Mekardika, where Govin and Kimrim Godbury left the party to go along with Adric Drac and his company. After traveling through town to the Harbor Ward, the party spotted Rollo Tanglestrand and his half-orc accomplice and ducked into an alleyway. Welcome back to New Delancia, our Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition campaign. I'm your most gracious DM, Val Phelan and VG Punks. <laughs> Hope everybody's having a great day, because this is going to be a wonderful, wonderful session. I am so excited about this. Um, so as you guys know, last time you made your way through the wrap market uh, down in the southwestern corner of the map that you see in front of you here of Makardika. Um, at the gates, you were all tested for the magical plague, the magical disease. Um, and once they were satisfied that no one was in, among the infected, uh, they allowed you entry, um, where you made your way to the harbor ward and are now uh, trying desperately to get to the jaunty Ladle Tavern. Uh, where Antarius awaits, uh, with information regarding the acquisitioned ship, uh, as well as its crew. Um, and uh, yeah, so that that is the current goal. Um, uh, and Aharo, welcome back. It's it's so great to have you again. Um, you've been dearly missed. Word. Welcome back. Yay. Hi. I just uh, took a whiskey drink. Gonna take a whiskey drink. Gonna take a whiskey drink. A whiskey drink. Oh, whiskey. <laughs> whiskey. And oh. DMC aid. And DMC aid. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to uh, let. Let's go ahead and cut back over to the uh, Mecardiga docks. Um, that's a quite a mouthful here. Um, let me see. Ahara, can you actually see the scene here? It's loading. Loading, loading, loading. Get those scenes up loading. <laughs> Rawhide. Hmm. Are you just on a black screen at the moment? Uh, it just hit 100%. Uh, oh, okay, I see cool. a black screen. It says Mercury Digger Docks. I'll preload a couple of other scenes here. Okay, great. Cool. Um, so yeah, it, it, I, um, I believe this definitely should be black for now. Um, so uh, Ahara, you have been at the... Um, actually, let me pull this up real quick, because we need some appropriate sound effects here. Hopefully that's not too loud for everybody. That's a little better. Yeah, okay. Um, all right, so uh, Ahara, you've been you've been with the wagon uh, pretty much the entire time, tending the Talos, and uh, you know, kind of taking in the information, um, you know, from the from the journey as it comes, um, you know, kind of resting and uh, and doing your own thing. Uh, so let's see. At this point, uh, you've gathered up your belongings. You know that you guys are making your way toward the. Um, or the jaunty ladle tavern. Uh, so I'd say you probably make your way up um, up the street here, and when you notice Rolo Tanglestrand uh, and that the others are kind of ducked out into this alleyway, um, you follow suit. So you should now have visibility on the map, yeah? Yep. Lower right-hand corner there. Rack, you see uh, Ahara sort of creep up behind you. Oh! Hey, hey, man. Hail. What's, uh, what's shaking? I'm not sure. I, they all ducked in the alley. I followed them. Tess turns around and puts her finger up to her lips as if to shush everyone. Rollo Tanglestrand and his companion are just up the street ahead. Ian 
Ian Fear, uh, you had donned a disguise in the previous session. Um, and you had started making your way up the street. What is your goal here? Uh, so I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be sort of trying to, to weave in with some of the people and, and just trying to like, because you had mentioned that we had heard uh, or at least I had heard uh, Rolo talking with some of the people and I'm going to at least try to gauge to see what it is they're doing here and uh, try to see if they're and try to make my way through uh, as best as I can uh, undetected. Okay. All right. So what's your first order of business? Where are you going? What are you doing on um, right now? So I, uh, what uh, shops do I see that are close to me? Uh, I do see three doors here. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Regarding the the building over here on the right, just to uh, just to your right. Well, the front of the building to the east is different from the others in the city, as it lacks any windows or other detail, save for a single wooden door banded with iron. Affixed to the door is a strange emblem of black and red, the significance of which is not clear. So that, that has to do with the building over on the right. Um, the building on the left. Um, not the not the one directly to your left, but uh, just to your north and left. There's a uh, door and a window uh, there. A tall, thin building stands at attention, fleshly against the Merchant Way Street, with a pinpoint precision. The cleanliness of the stone walls and iron-banded window and door betray meticulous attention to the function of every stone, board, and even iron bolts. There's a sign uh, clung to the outside of, the, um, of this obvious shop um, that bears an anvil and a cannon. Okay, uh, so I think I'm going to make my way uh, over towards um, the person that's standing in front uh, of the uh, precision shop with the window. Uh, this one here? Okay. Yeah. So this is a civilian. Um, they were um, walking north toward the uh, wagon that you see there. Um, uh, th this is a, um, a man. He's carrying a this sort of large sack. Uh, looks to be about working class, you'd gauge. OK. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm more keeping my eye on Rolo and his uh, work more than anything, but uh, I'm going to try to just like blend in casually and try to walk alongside him and, and the, uh, and f like a, at least for a little bit. They appear to be, um, they appear to be affixed on the guard uh, that is uh, this person right here. Uh, who is also walking toward them. All right. So uh, I think uh, I think for my movement, uh, I'm going to uh, like I'm going to try to just follow along and see if I can hear like when the guard meets up with Rolo to see if I can hear uh, them talking and see what they're going to be talking about. Okay, so you kind of just duck down into the uh, um, to kind of blend in with the rest of the crowd. Yeah. All right. 
Uh, I'd like you to go ahead and roll roll a performance check, but with advantage, please. Okay. Uh, hmm. Well, let's see. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and. So, this was something we were talking about a little earlier um, for one of my uh, optional features, which was the. Uh, what was it called again? Oh, yes. Fireball. <laughs> no, I'm not that strong a sorcerer. But uh, Magical Guidance. Okay. So, Can you um, link it in the chat? Are you able to? Uh, I don't think so, because I don't see it on my character sheet. But... Well, you know, I'm not even sure if this is here. Uh, this is where I found from the class features class features in the uh in the uh in the actual thing for the sorcerer for fifth edition huh interesting i wonder why that's not on your sheet then maybe it's maybe it's like an update because this is under a wiki thing so oh huh if not i mean I can just also use the, uh, uh, I mean, I do have inspiration as well. Sure. I mean, if you'd like, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, because it just, those were both pretty bad rolls, to be honest. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and use the inspiration to yeah. re-roll it. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. And then this is going to be normal? Or... Um, no, go ahead and roll it with advantage again. We'll, I'll let you do that. Okay. Those dice need to go in dice jail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but at least this is a little better. That, yeah, that was a little bit better. Um, you are currently blending in with the, uh, well, with, your, uh, with the uh, people and, and whatnot that surround you. Uh, Rolo and uh, the half orc um, do not seem to take any notice of you as they remain affixed on the guard before you. Um, would anyone else like to take any actions at this point? Um, Tess is going to move up to just this corner here so that she can peer around and kind of keep an eye on Ian Fear and see what's going on. Uh, Rec will move up behind Val and be like, what, what are we doing? We're waiting. Um, hmm. He uh, sort of moves up as well. Tess, what do you see? Tess sees Yenfir with this disguise. Tess thinks that Yenfir is trying to maybe eavesdrop on the situation. Um, Rolo Tanglestrand is out there with a friend. Tess has a hunch they may be looking for us. It is very likely. Ooh, that little half pint. The guard approaches um, Rolo and uh, Rolo and the half orc. Uh, the, the latter uh, speaking up. Excuse me, kind sir. Have you, um, perchance, seen a, a new a band of adventurers around these parts? The um, guard kind of looks around. No. Nothing of that sort in many weeks. The walls to the city are closed. You might try 
You might try going down south on the road just a bit. Could yield uh, better results for you. A lot more busy there. I... <clears throat> well, thank you. The guard continues on. What do you got, Ian Fear? All right. Balls well, in your court. Uh, Ian Fear is going to casually just sort of uh, this door that or this that I'm right across from is that the actual window or is that the door? Uh, the one that you that is directly to your left is a is an iron banded door. Okay. So Ian Fear is going to casually move over towards the shop and sort of uh, look towards uh, look in through the window. Uh, the window is window currently shut. Ah. <laughs> yeah, it would be would be kind of weird to open up the window from the outside, wouldn't it? All right. Well. See. Uh. All right. Then window shut. I guess I'm gonna. Try going up to the door. Uh, I will test to see if it is open. It is. All right, yeah, we'll open the door to step inside. Tess, you see Ian Fear enter a, um, what would appears to be a shop. Um, one moment, please. The door swings open without a single sound, and the smell of fire and metal permeate the air. A single human in the corner of this room is inspecting a large harpoon and a short, sturdy half-elf paces around the center of the room and is given to a momentary pause to exchange glances with you. Their demeanor remains stalwart as they slowly come about, stating in a monochromatic tone, Welcome in. If you see anything you like, then I'll be right here. Okay. Uh, you notice a familiar face as well in this establishment. Uh, that of the, um, well, one of the three brigands from before. She um, turns to see you as you uh, are crossing through the threshold and gestures towards you. Hey, old friend, it's good to see you again. Fancy meeting you here. Okay. Of course, of course. You know I couldn't. Uh, you know I I couldn't resist coming in to come see my old friend. Indeed. She uh sort of steps over to you. We're in position. You don't have anything to worry about. Good, because they're right outside, and we need to make our way uh, pretty soon. Where are your friends? Uh, the alley behind me in the uh, on the other side of the shop. Just leave everything to us. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Hopefully we will be uh, coming back to look at some of your wares some more. Indeed. What a fine establishment. I'm Sorry, I didn't purchase anything today, but you understand. Times are tough. The uh, shopkeeper scoffs, and he kind of continues pacing around the room. Or they, rather, continue pacing around the room. Okay. Uh, and then? This is um, one of the brigands. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. What uh what are you going to do now? Uh I I think we're going to I'm going to go ahead and um start slowly making my well, start casually making my way out of the business and then um back towards the area that I was uh that we came from. Okay. So as you exit the establishment, you now notice, um, or you now take notice of the tiefling um, spellcaster, uh, as well as the um, the half orc uh, Bogram, um, with whom you initially engaged in this contract with, uh, poised in the alleyways uh, across from one another, um, ready to strike at any given moment. Uh, I will, so I will casually start making, walking back down towards the alleyway, uh, uh, just give like a side look towards each as much as I can, as opposed to giving any sort of physical gesture of greeting. Okay. The, uh, the healer, um, follows you out the door. And then, yeah, we'll start. So Tess, you you see, um, you see the the healer from the party, the one that you had previously killed and brought back to life, <laughs> um, exits the establishment and is walking along with Ian Fear, uh, toward you. It's just a flesh wound. <laughs> Uh, looking back toward uh, Val, Rek, and Ahara, Tess is going to take a step back and say, uh, if you're just coming with one of our uh, friends. At this moment, Ian Fear, um, the half-orc, pops out from around the corner. He bends down and picks up a rock and throws it in the direction of Rollo and the half-orc. Rollo ducks underneath it swiftly, and the half-orc turns around. Who the hell threw that? He looks around for a few moments, and when nothing turns up, shakes his head. And the two start to uh, proceed north ever slowly. Okay, you guys, any actions? I I don't think I could see anything at this point. Probably. No, you haven't. Not you have not seen this. Um, you just know that Ian Fear is approaching, and you probably also heard the "Who the hell threw that." <laughs> yeah, after after hearing that part, Tess is going to take a peek around the corner and make sure that everything's still okay and that Ian Fear and our friend are coming back toward the alley. They're still making their way towards you. The uh, half-orc um, at this point um, occasionally glances over at Rolo. He looks rather uh, irritated. Ian Fear? You know, right. continue just moving back toward the party. Yeah. All right. She moves along with you. Once again. Um, so at this point, the tiefling also uh, pokes their head out. Um, both of them pick up a rock and throw it at the throw it at the half orc. This time, actually <laughs> nailing him. Uh, well. Oof. Actually nailing him square in the back of the head. Oof. He reels forward, turns around. He looks pissed. <laughs> Who threw that? I? Hmm. I he steps think... forward. Is it you, tiefling? You have something to say to me? I think, uh... So I think what I'm going to do is, well, let me see how far away I am. That might be a bit too far. Let me double check. 
a distance of five foot cube, 30 feet. Uh, I think. Oh man, that's <laughs> quite. I'm sad. a little. I'm a little bit too far away to. Well, hang on. It's one of those metamagic skills I got. It's a little closer. Oh, okay, never mind. Uh, the other people around here start to sort of gather around to see what's going on. All right. Uh, yeah, well, uh, I think, yeah, I, I'm, I think we're kind of going to just sort of pause, but slowly, like, still walking towards the others, but just kind of pause. Rubbernecking? Yeah. <laughs> Let's get back on. Ian Fear continues back toward your position, Tess. Go ahead and make your move. As, Tess as is just gonna she's just gonna back up and let them have space to come into the alley if they need to. As a, as a healer approaches, she says Don't worry. We've got control of the situation. Hang tight. This will all be over in a moment. You can see beneath her mask, she sort of has this smile. Uh, you can tell by the uh, the way her eyes clench at the sides into these narrow crow's feet. We definitely appreciate your help. Thank you. I think Ian is going to sort of like casually lean against the uh, the wall of this building while looking on uh, at this as a rubber necker. Rolo tugs at the sleeve of the half orc. But he uh he doesn't say anything. He seems to just not talk. Um but he makes a, a facial uh expression that is like bro, leave it alone. <laughs> Are you serious right now? But the orc is he's not having it. Bagram uh, then steps forward. One moment here. It was me. Now. And he's holding a rock at this point. He's tossing it up into the air and catching it. And this orc, the, the, um, the other orc, he looks like he is just about to throw down with him. And at this moment, a guard, the same, the same guard, appears from around the corner. He uh, just stands there, overlooking the entire situation, just watching everything go down. This dwarf, um, I mean, I'm sorry, this, this orc sort of, you know, walks up to Bagram. He puffs out his chest and he stands up as tall as he can, um, trying to make himself taller than Bagram, but uh, <laughs> not having a good time with that. You want a piece of me, boy? And at this moment, the... Uh, the guard starts to close in on the two. Neither of them seem to pay them much mind. Yeah. Any actions, anyone? Feel free to interrupt me whenever. I think we're going to be more sort of looking towards the uh, towards the healer to see, you know, when to make our move. And finally, the guard jogs over you two are under arrest <laughs> Rolo 
Um, Rolla comes up on the guard and whispers something under his breath. You too, then. <laughs> Let me rolls real quick on the screen. The guard claps all three of them in irons, none of them willing to actually fight back at this person uh, because they're, you know, they're they're on a they're on a mission, obviously. Uh, and the guard leads them off and away. <laughs> As they're walking away, like Gamefear's gonna like, even though he's also hit behind the mask, he's gonna sort of lean back towards the towards the healer and say, "Did anyone tell you you're a genius?" Christopher? Is that you? <sighs> the healer's sighs. Not to worry, though. This is part of the plan. The part that I was the most not looking forward to. I will go and clear things up with Bogram. Uh, but uh, we have, as uh, um, as you have requested, guaranteed your safe arrival at the docks, and as such, um... ah, yes, of course. Well, uh, let us reach the docks, and we shall uh, we shall secure your payment. Well, uh, she kind of looks down the street and looks at you kind of confused. Very well, if we need to, uh, if uh, you require an escort, then I can provide that as well. No extra charge, of course. We, uh, really, we just need directions uh, more than anything. We're supposed to meet uh, with a friend at the, uh, at the tavern. Ah. You must be talking about the jaunty ladle, which is just up the street here. Um, she actually points at the last building in the series on the left. Okay. Uh, and then, um, and I guess, uh, and Ian Fear will, will look to Tess and say, I mean, I, I, I think we can agree that they've done uh, a good enough job in securing Rolo away from us. You do speak the truth. You gonna hand her that money? Yeah, Tess will uh, pull out her uh, pretty hefty coin bag at this point and start counting out the rest of the funds that we owe them. Here you go. A total of 3500 I believe, was agreed to. Yes, and I do thank you. Now, I am... Uh, I will proceed to help Bogram, um, and my counterpart um, should be hanging around the jaunty ladle, um, in case you're confused, of course, of which building it might be. She kind of smirks, you can tell, from <laughs> underneath her mask. Uh, and with that, I think... Uh... I mean, Ether will still leave the disguise on, but he's going to slowly motion to the others to start uh, coming up forward into the streets. Valphalen pulls, um, uh, pulls his hood over his head, turns toward Wreck. I don't believe anything could possibly hide the <laughs> dragonborn in me. Well, I still got this uh, devil mask in disguise from uh, when we were down south. Might I impose upon you? Here you go. I thank you. And he places the mask over his face, and uh, you all start down the road toward the jaunty ladle tavern at the end of the street. 
Tess has her um her mask on her face as well as her hood pulled up and she's also kind of uh holding on to her tail to make sure that it doesn't flop around while she's walking. One moment. Loading. <laughs> Um, what kind of mask was it that Val's wearing? Is it a devil mask? Yeah, it's a devil mask. Okay. Uh, sorry, one moment. <clears throat> the briny expanse spans out before you as far as you are able to see. Thoughts of your quest and of the magical plague seem to fade in your mind as you are captivated by the foamy waves and distant horizon. Your thoughts come trickling back into your mind slowly, as if they are carried in by an evening tide. You ponder upon the mirror, a foreboding portal into an unknown place. What relevance does it have to the encroaching disease? Did the disease come from the mirror, or was it the result of your meddling in the affairs of ages past? Will you be the savior of the world, or the harbinger of its calamitous destruction? The thoughts wash away as steadily as they came. You open your eyes and turn to find yourself standing before your destination, the Jaunty Ladle Tavern. The tavern is a small, stout building whose entrance is adorned with an anchor and ladle. Next to the door, a wooden sign reads, Welcome in. Please pet your server when you receive your food. You stop to ponder the meaning. As um, Val Phelan, without hesitation, cracks open the door, flooding the immediate area with the sounds of banter and merriment. The warmth of the hearth creates a shelter most blanketing against the cool, oh, what, <laughs> briny outside air. Wait a minute, I've got to get some music going <laughs> tavern time this is my favorite time welcome to the jaunty ladle tavern i'm taking it you all step through the door yeah yep, yep. Okay, cool gonna just drag you guys in uh, maybe one at a time <laughs> it's kind of in an awkward position you just like float through the wall. <clears throat> the scent of the sea here is replaced. I'm sorry, the scent of the sea is replaced here with the inviting smell of delicious searing meat. The bar is as lively as the docks outside stirring with people talking and the clanking of tankards amid a sea of wooden tables and full glasses. So there are a lot of uh, patrons at the bar, one of which you notice is your friend, Antarius. Uh, there's a lot of merrymaking going on. Um, let me see. Tess, Ahara, uh, and, um, and Wreck. Um, you all notice that there is a uh, there is a yellow lab dog who is um, sitting very close to the bar, and in its mouth it holds a um, a basket. Oh, puppy! Tess exclaims excitedly. As soon as you look at it and start talking, its tail starts going. Oh, Tess can't resist, and she's going to approach the pupper. It ducks its head down with the basket in its mouth still, clinging to it as though it it is its one and um or its its single task in life. What's uh, in the basket? Yeah, what's in the basket? Uh, nothing at the moment, but just as you start to ponder the meaning of the basket, the um the tender of the bar walks over and places 
a couple of plates of food and says, three. And the dog looking at you breaks eye contact with you um, and moves over to the table with these two people. They take their food from the basket, set it on the table, give the dog a pet, and the dog comes back over and reassumes its position. Oh, this makes sense to Tess now, and she's going to walk back to this table here and, and take a seat, looking at everyone, saying, They employed dogs here. Fascinating. Uh, I'd like to wild shape into a dog. <laughs> <laughs> you wild shape into... Actually, hold on. Um... See here. In, in fact, the, the dog that I see there with a the basket in its mouth, I want to try to replicate him as, as closely as possible. <laughs> or her. One moment, if you please. I'm trying to figure out how I did this again. Looking at Rhett closely, Tess is going to point at the dog and say, Not for eating. Okay. Sorry, one one moment. Okay, that's wait. Uh, I do not have one for dogs, so we are just doing a wolf. Uh, you are now wild shaped into a uh, a dog. Cool. Ahara, uh, are right, you though? Ahara, are you trying to get a job here? I'm just gonna bark. wander around the bar and, and nuzzle customers and see if I can overhear anything. Bark, bark. All right. Um, to where are you going? Where will you go first? I'm going to go to this back table here. As you approach this table, uh, the couple of individuals that are sitting at it um, sort of glance over to you and uh, raise an eyebrow. Uh, the one across, speaking very quietly, says, um, Actually, did I put in? Did I put that in? Okay. The one that's sitting across from him says, "I don't pay the dog no mind, Corby." Now, back to business. If um, you have the supplies, my company. Could have the coin. The uh, guy across from him, obviously named Poe, says, Hmm. Well, these uh, supplies, uh, they're not without their squirrels. Uh, squirrels <laughs> squirrel um, Ian Fear is going to take a seat uh, next to Antarius uh, and say everything's secured and ready to go actually that's uh, why I wanted to meet you all here uh, you in specific he turns to you Tess I was just at the shipwright. I'd like you to accompany me over there in just a moment, but um, the cost of the ship, it's galleon, actually. <laughs> much to, much to uh, my surprise, uh, that is the only ship that they have available. Um, so the cost for the ship and the crew um, to get us there is going to be about 300,000. Or no, I'm sorry, 30,000, 30,000. I did not mean oh, 300,000. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say. 30,000. Uh, 
in fear is going to look to Tess to say, do we have that? Uh, let Tess check. And she starts uh, rifling through her bag and counting all of the coins. Give me a moment. Right? Did I did I not get that correct? Nope. Yeah, thirty thousand. Tess, you should have just about thirty thousand on you. No. Not in my currency right now. I have like eleven thousand five hundred. I, I must have missed the, uh, putting some. One? Yeah, I must have missed putting some currency in or something in in previous games. If I'm supposed to have thirty thousand. How uh? How much do you have? Eleven thousand four hundred and ninety five. Hmm. Well. Uh, I'll lean in and say, well, let's see if perhaps they might consider. Uh, a slight reduction in their price if they're serving uh, the uh, the famous uh, entertainer. You know. Chettlebell. Tristopher Chettlebell. And, and of course, and Infear's gonna um, pull out sort of like one of these official looking documents uh, uh, to, to pass it along to Antarius. What is the uh, what is the document that you produce? So this will this will be um, this will appear to be a um, uh, sort of similar to the decree uh, from the. Um, oh, is this the? Um... Giver? But this is going to be sort of like uh, this is going to be written as uh, a, a decree from uh, from the president. Uh, Emeritus uh, in Shopavin, uh declaring uh, 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 declaring gratitude and reward to the uh, persons who can uh, safely return uh, Mr. Uh, Shettlebell back. Well, actually, not Mr. Just Shettlebell uh, back to Shopavin. No good, I'm afraid. There aren't any other ships coming out of port right now due to the disease. We're buying this ship. But... I'll put this out there for you, Tess. Let me take 11,000 of that. And... I'll see to the rest. Don't worry about it. Does sound like a plan. Oh, you know what? Don't we still have some some of the gear we were looking to offload? Do you? Because I because I think we originally we were going to consider doing it, but because of the low prices that we were getting from Bunaver, we decided to just uh, keep most of the rest of the stock. Uh, you actually sold so you sold that for the eleven thousand that you currently have. So that that's where you got that's where you came by that eleven thousand. Um, you wound up not selling it to the blacksmith, but selling it to the item to the magic item shop. That's when right. Ahara reappeared from the nine hells. Poof. <laughs> but Antarius makes it pretty clear. Eleven thousand will be enough. I, I'll take care of the rest. He says. Tess does appreciate your kindness. She'll uh, she'll count out the coins um, as uh, quietly as possible at her table. And Tarius says, uh, kind of, um, he kind of backhands your shoulder, and he says, "You're buying the drinks, though." Tess can do that, and she smiles. Uh, lifting her hand up, and she's saying, Let us get around for our friends here. 
Surely I'm included in that. A smiling tiefling walks in the door. Absolutely, of course. She takes a place at the uh, table on the uh, south side. Ahara, um, as you continue to observe the two of these people, um, they sometimes exchange glances with you, um, not really, um, not really thinking much of it, but also speaking in what seems to be a very strange. Uh, they're they're using very strange common words to describe things like squirrel sometimes and and various animals, different types of ships, but they're all the words seem to be out of place. You can't make heads or tails of it. Mm. All right, I'm gonna wander on. Maybe I'll check out these two over here. Let me see. These two are wearing, um, not the uh, well. No, they're they're wearing sort of the meagerest of of clothes, um, uh, shirts that are very torn and um, and the cloth looks quite old uh, and used. Um, one of them, the um, the one on the right uh, there, he uh, raises up his glass. So by tomorrow, we'll be on a ship to shop a bin. And the other says, Ha, ah, I'm excited to be back on the ship. The ship. It's a ship. Aye, a galleon. That's what I was told. They kind of continue to um, sort of give this banter about sailing and and being on the high seas and that sort of thing as they uh, they kind of chug tankard after tankard after tankard. You just kind of sit there and watch in awe. You've not seen people drink that much. Boring. I'm going to wander over to another table on the far side. Here. An elder dwarf um, sits a sword strapped to his side, and uh, just to the right of him, a um, a robed figure, a uh, hood pulled far over their face, uh, but still exposing a very large uh, and very prominent chin. Back on guard duty tomorrow, the uh, dwarf says. Family would be in such a better position if it weren't for my worthless brother. And he looks up at the, uh, at the other um, couple of sailors that you were just visiting. He rolls his eyes, turns back toward the mage. You ever have this much problem with your family? I have no family. A very quiet voice comes from the um, the hooded figure. And Tarius, finishing his drink, gestures to you, Tess, and um, well, the shipwright is just across the street from here. Shall we? After you, my friend. Indeed. Antarius stands up, um, places. Um, he uh, starts to go toward the uh, toward the door. The barkeep looks at you. P 
payment for the drinks will be one moment. I have this down here. There it is. Yeah, yeah I should probably show this. So this is the menu that shows on uh, that is up on the wall uh, back behind the counter. Ah, yes, the total for your drinks, one, two, three, four, five, six. Sixty silver, if you please. Rather expensive. Uh, Tess will uh, hand over the funds and saying, um, Tess, thanks you for your services. Ah, yes. Uh, do come, do come again. And then Tess will accompany Antarius. Antarius leads you outside and across the street to another building. Let me grab that real quick. This tall stone building has wood carved portraits of different types of ships arranged in an interesting display leading to a wooden door of the same material. Upon the door, a simple sign hangs reading Mecardica Shipwright. And Harrius opens the door, steps aside, and offers for you to enter first. After you, he says. Tess enters the building. The door to the, uh, the shipwright opened with a slight creak. The inside of the shop is dimly lit, and the smell of freshly finished wood stirs thoughts of sailing the seas in a finely crafted vessel. From behind the counter, a half orc woman donning an eye patch and a fiery red headband starts towards you. She throws her hands up in greeting as she hobbles up and calling out to you. Whoop. Why do I have two Antarius in this room? That's weird. There we go. I'm done, Todd. It was very strange. Utbacht, strangers. Hail, friend. Welcome to the Mechardika docks. If you need a ship or ship accessories, you've come to the right place. We can turn over any ship order in a short matter of weeks. Uh, but talk is cheap, right? Let's get down to business. She uh, looks up, sees Antarius, and says, Ah, it's you. <laughs> I knew you'd be back. 30,000. That was for ship and for the posting for the crew. And indeed, we have it. He uh, hands over your the same sack of coins that you had handed him before, and he also uh, produces a uh, piece of paper. She picks it up, looking irritated at first, but then... You? Ah, uh, I know a noble when I see one. Well, sure. Your ship will be ready very shortly. Why not go have a drink at the bar and... I'll come and get you when the time's come. Very well. Tess gives like a slight polite bow and says, uh, Tess, thanks you so much for your help. She sort of steps up. And you? When did you first get your she legs? She uh, talks between her tusks. She legs? Tess, Tess does not know. What do you mean by by she legs? She clearly mis misheard. The she, the she. She 
gestures out the east of the building. She! she. The, ocean. the ocean. Oh. Uh, to, to be completely honest, Tess has never touched the ocean. Ah, then you're in for a treat. This will be your first vessel. Yes, yes, it will be. Tess is a little nervous, she has to admit. She, uh, she genuinely looks very excited for you. I'll see you at the jaunty ladle. We shall she, see uh, you there, friend. Steps back over, she files the paper uh, neatly into her desk and then plops that bag of coins down, spills it out, and begins counting. You gonna make your way back to the bar then? Yeah, Tess will step outside and wait for Antarius. Antarius also uh, comes out. You both step back into the bar. And Tess will take her seat at this table. And Antarius takes his seat at the bar uh, next to you. And so the deed is done, is it? And Therius managed to take care of everything. Something about him being a noble? Indeed. He is... <sighs> he has been a captain in the Imajokian um, kingdom. That is why you refer to him as captain. Indeed. Uh, yes, that's true. I I serve Queen Alice Webb. These are all just names to Tess. Tess is very hungry. Uh, so are you able to, if you click on the, um, over on the left, you should have what looks like a little bookmark icon. And if you click on that, you should be able to reopen the menu if you'd like. Anybody else? Any actions here? I just enjoy my drink. I will re-share it. Right there it is. Thank um, you. Ahara, your... Uh, well, Talos um, steps up behind you and plants his nose directly into your butt. Makes sense. <laughs> I will. Uh, I will follow suit. I suppose it's the thing to do. You all watch as Ahara plants his nose into oh, Alice's <laughs> butt and gives a. We'll do that weird dance where dogs are trying to sniff each other's butts and kind of circling around each other. <laughs> Tess has never seen someone so dedicated. Roll the dexterity check. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alice is ro rolling an opposing dexterity check. Do you have anything that gives you advantage on saving throw or on uh, ability checks for butt sniffing? You both rolled the same. Uh, well, we do both have advantage <laughs> when it's a perception check based on uh, smelling or hearing. Roll it with advantage. <laughs> You're easily able to overtake Talos. <laughs> Why did I do that? <laughs> Something's wrong with me. You're easily able to outmaneuver Talos, and um, Talos looks rather awkward about the entire uh, the, ex the entire exchange. I sniffed the crap out of that. <laughs> well, it smells like dirty dog. Fair. <laughs> Rack you. 
This this entire exchange happens right next to you. That guy's kind of weird. Uh, y'all 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 see this? Tess has to admit he is dedicated. Are she you? uh, I Tess has to admire that about Ahara. I have read about such behaviors in wolves and in dogs, in that this is not only the way that they say hello, but it is also sort of a, hey, where have you been? That makes sense to Tess. Indeed, those of the animal kingdom are able to gain information in more ways than just talking. I find it very interesting. That's not creepy at all. <laughs> well, Phelan continues to sip on his drink, and he... Um, uh, flags over the... Uh, the bartender... Instead of the bartender, the dog actually approaches. Um, and inside the basket, a small uh, piece of parchment paper and a, um, a writing utensil on which to write with it. Or write on it. He scribbles down his order. Um, assuming everybody still has the, um, has the menu up. Uh, he orders a whole duck and a sunflower loaf. And he passes the piece of parchment and writing utensil over to you, Rack. Uh, I also write down a duck. Are you as hungry as I am? Always. What do you do with the uh, parchment and What do you mean? Well, you've got this parchment and a uh, piece of paper. What do you do with it now? I, do I write I, down. I pass it on. Okay. So Ahara, he places this parchment in front of you with a writing utensil. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna chew on the pencil. So Ahara scoops up this pencil into his mouth, and you almost think that some fuckery is about to take place, um, but instead he just chews the pencil in half. <laughs> Looks like Ahara's gotten what he wants to eat. Uh, Ahara, how was Tess supposed to write down her order? Perhaps we just put him down for a whole duck. <laughs> There's oh, still yeah. enough pen there's still enough writing utensil left. <laughs> Tess uh, takes the the slobbery half of the writing utensil that still has the graphite intact and she's going to put down um two whole ducks, one for her, one for Ahara, and then she's going to add an apple pie to that list practically drooling um, at the thought of it, she will give the parchment and the writing utensil back to the yellow lab. All right. The uh, tiefling also uh, takes another set of parchment and uh, grabs that writing utensil, sort of makes this disgusting uh, or this disgusted um, facial expression and then jots down uh, her order onto the a uh, piece of paper. Uh, don't worry, I will cover my own food at least. Tess can cover for you, my friend. Having received the piece of paper, the dog sits there, staring. Oh, and Tess gives the, the yellow lab a couple pats on the head. Oops. I was trying to drag him over there. There we go. 
Um, the dog, satisfied that that is all that is needed at this time, uh, proceeds back to his position at the uh, end of the counter, coming a little bit too close. Uh, the bartender uh, looks over and says, Hey, out of the kitchen. The uh, dog sort of backs up. Bartender comes over, takes the slip of paper, and then spins around and starts crafting the uh, the food. Uh, what about you two? What do you have? Looking at you and uh, and Antarius. Uh, uh, Imper is just gonna. Sunflower loaf and black beans for me, thanks. Coming right up. Amphira's going to go, and the same for myself. And Terius, um And Terius, uh puts down a small sack of gold. Uh, don't worry about it, everyone. I've got it. Being royalty definitely comes with its advantages. I'll never forget when I was first taken from the monastery by the knight who was my mentor. Oh, the fine foods that we had, much, much more um, decadent than the meager foods that we ate at the monastery. Decadent? As in how? Beautiful, huge plate presentations. Grand banquets. Oh. Her eyes almost sparkling. She's going to uh, lean forward and, and just listen closely and, and say, That sounds so amazing that Taz, Taz grew up primarily on bread and porridge. I often felt out of place in being there. Mostly due to the actions of the other knights, you see. What actions? Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, Infer is going to sort of uh, lean behind and uh, look to Tess and say, wait till we get to shopping. Them. I'm going to take you to such good food places. She wipes some drool from the side of her mouth just thinking about it. Uh, Tess can't wait. Ahara, do you intend to stay in that form? Um... I'm gonna uh I'm gonna stare blankly at him. But uh I, I think I wanna I think I wanna like mess with the, the drunks in the corner. Um so I, I'm I'm gonna wander over there and um once once they're both kinda I, I'm gonna, you know, like bark or, or nudge them or whatever, once they're kinda looking at me, I'm gonna I'm gonna change back while they're looking at me. <laughs> So you, uh, um, you know, you bark, um, people start to kind of look around. Um, they, they kind of fix on the, uh, on the other dog, uh, thinking uh, it was them at first. One of them turns to the other, you know, what we should do is we should have a ship's dog. Dogs are good dogs and like they kind of <laughs> you can tell these guys are absolutely plastered <laughs> in a um um in order to get one of them uh one of their attention you latch onto the shirt of the one wearing blue and kind of give it a tug he turns around mommy Sorry, mommy. Sorry, and he makes eye contact with you. 
I think that really says something about his mother. <laughs> oh, my mother! <laughs> oh, my mother! Oh, my mother! <laughs> Welcome in, Healthiest. Welcome in. Um, yes. I- Actually, let me let me oh, well let me handle this and then I'll divert over to healthiest for just a bit. Um, okay. So uh, as soon as he makes eye contact with you, you um, transform back into your original form. Much to his um, surprise, he almost falls backward in his uh, in his stool. Um, I'm gonna kind of grab him and be like, "Are you are you okay? You are you okay? You you seem you seem unstable." As soon as you you kind of grab him, he uh, he almost topples over. You're a you're a, you're a, you are a you hold wait. You know what I need is another drink. That um, I I think maybe. And the other one says. Uh, looking at you, he, his his face is just completely pale, um, <laughs> like he's seen a ghost, and he's staring at you. I I, I think that we've had quite enough. <laughs> I'm gonna say, uh, you two should uh, you two should calm down. It sounds like you've had a rough evening. Oh, we got work. It's been real slow since. The uh, epidemic spread throughout. Um, where where are are we? See Siuk, that that's the one. So we we don't get a whole lot of sailing jobs, you understand. So now we have the sailing time. Um, and he kind of doesn't make eye contact with you, like he's looking everywhere but into your eyes. <laughs> I just give him a pat on the back and, and wander back to the table. <laughs> Sail on. <laughs> Happy vo- vo- um, voyages. Yeah. Healthiest, you, um, you had been in search of a... Um, whoops. You had been in search of a blacksmith and... Um, Seeking one through the uh, town square, uh, you're able to discern that there actually is one in the harbor district. Uh, you make your way there. Uh, so at this point, you're probably lined up just outside of a tall, thin building which stands at attention, fleshly against the Merchant Way Street with a pinpoint precision. The cleanliness of the stone walls and iron-banded window and door betray a meticulous attention to the function of every stone, board, and even each iron bolt. There's a sign just to the left of the door that bears an anvil and a cannon, actually. Nice. Okay, that looks like something I'm trying to get into, so I'm going to... Uh, I'm assuming I'm going to walk in and because you don't have to knock, maybe? No, or maybe it's open. I'll, Okay, so I'll walk in. Boom. You All walk right. open and shut the door behind you. You note that the door opens quite easily, like a well-oiled machine. Uh, as yes. you walk in, there is a single, um, there's a single half-elf um, who turns around to look at you as you walk in. Oh, welcome in. If you see anything you like, I'll be right here. All right. There's another customer, um, or at least you deem them so. Uh, looks to be a commoner, and they're just sort of rifling through the um, uh, the bolts, uh, the um, har- uh, I'm sorry, the harpoons um, laid up against the wall there. Um, sort of admiring the fine craftsmanship. Nice. Looking around, there are cannons lining the south wall. There are barrels of cannonballs. Um, There are harpoons uh, in barrels and uh, stood up against the uh, wall over to your east. Uh, A hearth um, glows gently on the northern wall, uh, very inviting, uh, with a fur rug laid out before it. 
Um, beyond that, there are a couple of uh, ballista that are actually um, sitting against the wall. They they appear to be set upon these um, these fixtures that are meant not to be able to move around. They don't have any wheels or any kind of um, anything that looks like they would. They're supposed um, to be mounted to a ship. You would yes. assume. Yes. I gotcha. Well, this is not exactly what I'm looking for, but given the adventure I'm about to embark on, these might come very in handy. You say you're about to uh, embark upon an adventure. Sea bearing. You uh, have anything to do with that ship that just got chartered? Well, I hope it didn't leave yet. Oh, no, no. It doesn't leave for a day or two now. Oh, good. We just filled an order for them. A few cannons. Um, cannonballs. How many, how many cannons exactly? Six. Six of my largest, actually. Fine, fine large. cannons. What about those ballistas back there? Did they order any of those? Well, no. No, they didn't. How much are those? Hmm. Yeah, kind of glances around. Usually they go for around a thousand gold. Uh, that ain't bad. Okay, out of character... What am I going to do about money? <laughs> uh, ah. Yeah, you've you've got about five gold to your person right now. Right. Um, so it's all you brought with you. That's what I started with, and I never had the gold bag. <laughs> yeah, Tess had been keeping all the, uh, all the gold up to this point. Okay. The um, the shopkeep says now. Uh, you you mentioned before this wasn't exactly what you're looking for. I just want to let you know if you need a custom work, uh, it's going to take me a couple weeks. Well, you might be in luck there. As far as what I'm looking for. I don't know how to do this, but we'll try it. Okay. Go what are you here. looking for? Um, I'm going to basically... Okay, hang on. Where is the... Okay, so... I'm actually looking for quite a few things, but the one thing that I'm kind of looking for or a few simple things that I might be looking for would be, uh, uh, let me see, uh, where is it? Uh, da, 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 da. How about in here? Okay. All right. And then I just do something like this. Uh, what, what, what's going on? <laughs> uh, I'm trying to post a picture. Okay, so I'm looking for a dagger that splits into two at a push of a button. Hmm. And something on something on the lines of this. If you don't have anything like that, I'm also looking for something like this and two of them to be exact. Okay, so you kind of do your best to describe. Okay, you're you're also looking for uh, potentially an arm blade. That okay? Yeah, it's a gauntlet, but it's got a blade with it. Hmm. I have to say, I'm rather intrigued by your uh, your request. Let me take a quick look into my my compendium real quick. Mm -hmm. The only other thing that I might be looking for that you might be able to get fairly quickly within a day or two is something like this. 
There it is. What is that? What is that last one you posted? It's a spiral blade. Oh, interesting. It's a dagger. Okay. But it's spiral. Mm. It's supposed to do some pretty good damage. Now, I've never made a blade that could split in two. I'm not sure that's something I might be able to do. You might try uh, you might try some of the smiths in Bunavar for something like that. Okay. Uh, however, an, an arm blade, I have actually made one of them before. Let me... Uh, Let's see. Uh, he kind of proceeds back to this back room, opens up the door, and goes through. As she opens the door, uh, or as they open the door, you see um, the light of what you assume to be a forge in the background. Um, let's see. Do these things not list value? Why would they not list value? Okay, one moment. I need to look this up on D&D Beyond real quick. No problem. Take your time. Did Tess ever tell you about the time I killed a duck? No, Tess doesn't believe you ever told this story, but she's super interested in hearing. Well, it was like a duck, kind of like this one, uh, but we were uh, we were out by the water, and uh, I didn't have a bow or anything. So, but I did have my hand axe. So what I did was was I as I made this quacking sound, put my hands up, and I went. <laughs> that scared the duck. It didn't like that at all. It, it tried to get away, so I had to throw my axe at it. Did you hit it on him. the first on the first try? Yeah, yeah, I got him. But then it fell in the water, and I had I had to go out and find it and my axe. It was it sank. The it suspense wasn't... is killing. Test. Did you did you get your axe? Your duck? I did. It was it was this one right here, and I pull out a, a hand axe. It's a little small. It, my mom gave me this axe. It was, it's hers. I yeah, had to go get say... it. So instead of uh, quacking, you made it croak. I, I may not have been the best quacker to be going duck hunting <laughs> with. So, but I got the axe back. That's I know you were I know you were worried about that. I got it. That's good. You got your axe and the duck. Wow. Tess yep. wishes she is as good as a hunter as Wreck is. It it takes years of practice and uh, trial and error. How did you cook the duck? Well, uh, I came back and, and I made a stew. Oh, duck stew. Yeah. Before long, the... Um, uh, or actually, I'll get back to you guys in just a moment. So, Healthiest, <laughs> the shopkeep approaches you. For an arm blade, two hundred yes. gold. Two hundred gold. All right, that sounds a little reasonable. For the for the other dagger, since it it wouldn't require any uh, magical components, um, I'd go with about three and a, three gold, five silver. Three gold, five silver. That sounds like a winner to me. I will, well, let's see what you got, and then we'll talk about payment. Well, this this will be a custom piece. I'll need to score up a plan for it, and then uh, I, I assume by your Do you earlier... have all the materials for it? Oh, sure, sure. I can I can make anything. I've okay, got plenty well, of materials coming into I'm... Macrodeca. How about you uh, show me the schematics and then I'll see if there needs to be any adjustments and I'll pay you from there. As far as the arm blade goes, uh, the arm blades, I uh, wasn't looking for anything magical. Uh, I'm afraid without, have... with the uh, arm blade, um, the, the least I can do will be, um, it, it must be magical in nature in order to function, as you say, unless you already have an 
Um, uh, well, there is two ways of me thinking that this would work either with like a little button that is attached to a spring that shoots it out, the blade shoots out, or uh, with momentum. Yes. So the arm blade schematics that I have are all uh, are all magical in nature. Um, and now that's not a problem. That's very can, nice. Yes, uh, they, they do offer all the benefits of a magical weapon. Uh, well, that would be nice. The other dagger, as I said, is going to be a custom piece. Uh, may not be as good for slashing as it is for stabbing. And turning. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for any... Uh, as far as this particular dagger, uh, I'm not looking for slashing. I'm looking for mainly piercing. So if you want the latter dagger... Um, I'll call it an even five gold with shipping. Uh, I assume you're going to want this shipped out after your ship once I've created it. Like I said, it's going to take a few weeks. I've got to score up a schematic for it. It's going to take easily a few days itself. Once the once we have that, me and my associate will start to smith the weapon. And once we have it, we'll send it out on the next ship out of here. Where are you headed? Out of character, it, is this place that we're traveling to um, a, uh, reachable not by boat? No. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. So where am I headed to? I think that it was called Shuk, I think. You're headed not... to Shopabin. Shopabin. Okay, well, then I'm he headed to Shopabin. Ah, yeah, we have the occasional ship that goes out to shop a bit. I think the next one's probably, aside from your ship, of course, is going to be due out or due in to dock, uh, due in to port um, a few weeks from now. Which should line up pretty well. I'll get that on the next ship out to shop a bit if you'd like. So you have a uh, cargo ship, go trading ship going out that way? Sure, not as frequently as they used to prior to the... Uh, prior to the spread of the disease, you understand, but they do still come in and out. What would the world be without trade? And huh, I probably, I would hardly have a shop if it weren't for that trade. It's been slow lately, but it's not dead. There you go. Yeah, I think I would like to have something like this shipped out for five gold. Uh, yeah, I mean, you did show me a, a rough draft of what you're looking at, right? I have an idea of what I've what I've got to uh, score up, but I'll have a I'll have a schematic drawn out uh, over the next couple days. It's going to take a while, you understand. We don't usually make weapons that are curved as such, but I think I can pull it off. All right. You Sounds want any good. kind of uh, engravement? No, but a nice sheath would be nice. Oh. Uh, Consider it done, yeah. I don't sell a weapon without a sheath. Could you make that sheath uh, kind of like another dagger? Not exactly like the one that it's sheathing, but... Um, where he... I'm not sure I follow you. You want me to put a blade on a sheath? And make the sheath the blade itself. I suppose I could build in a small blade on it. I might have some scrap I could I could attach. That'd work. All right, yeah. sounds good. Why not? Sounds interesting. Oh, the whole project actually is interested. Maybe I'll even come up with a new line of curvy blades like this one. That's <laughs> that's interesting. Well, like I said, it packs the wall up. Well, five gold. All right, so how do I do gold? Uh, gold. Uh, I, I've got you. Just for, because uh, we're running a little short on time, I'll take care of it. Uh, so I'm just going right. to move that five gold from you. All right, sounds good. So um, as, you re as you recall before, uh, Antarius had mentioned that they were headed to the Jaunty Ladle Tavern, uh, which should be just up the street here. I probably saw it on the way in here. 
Uh, actually, it's it's just up the way. Right. Probably so asked about it out there. Jaunty Tavern, you said? Yeah, Jaunty Ladle Tavern. Uh, um, so you can open doors on the map by clicking on them. Um, so hey, I'm gonna hop over. stop, Pete. You know about a tavern around here? Right next door. Right next door. Sounds good. Thanks a lot. Yeah, he, uh, he kind of gestures to the north. I'll be back. So and um, a couple days. <laughs> <laughs> back in the uh, back in the tavern. Um, I'll tell you, so I'm gonna say you just kind of make your way uh, back around to the tavern. Curiously, and uh, a sign um, near the front door of this place, uh, the door which bears a, uh, a uh, an anchor. Uh, what was it? An anchor. Ooh, do we have that? anchors for the boat? That could be good for some turning speed. You don't know that yet. Um, whoops, that is the wrong one. Where am I looking here? Uh, it's got an anchor and a ladle on it, and the uh, a, a sign curiously next to the next to the door reads, "Welcome in. Please pat your server when you receive your food." Please pat your server. Pet your server. Oh, pet your server. Is this an animal thing? Hmm. Curious. As you swing the door open, you immediately see a Hara on the other side of the uh, of the door. You know, uh, it looks kind of busy in here. Yeah, your <laughs> your party is uh, gathered around one of the tables. As the door opens, okay. Tess is going to uh, wave at Healthius and say, "Hail, friend! Welcome to the tavern." Tess was wondering where you were. Speaking of, have we heard of our friend Yolanti? They just disappeared. Tess has been curious. Yolanti? Uh, last I saw, they were with the rear wagon. Is that not still the case? Tess Yolanti? feels like she hasn't seen Yolanti in a while. Mm-hmm. Out, of ca- out, out of character, Yolanti was a, a, a character who had joined us in previous sessions. Ah. I, okay, in character. I don't know about a Yulanti. U- Tess hopes that she is still with the wagon, but she, Tess is concerned we haven't seen her in a while. Healthius, um, as you as you have this exchange with Tess, a uh, a yellow Labrador dog walks up next to her with a basket in its mouth with several plates of food, including whole ducks. Um, a loaf of bread and and several other pieces of food. Um, it walks up next to you, Tess, plants its butt down, and wagging its tail and looking at you intently. Tess reaches nice. into the basket and begins handing out the different food items. She she pulls a duck out with her apple pie and places it in front of her, and then says, "Uh, who else here ordered the the duck?" I did. And she hands Val a uh, a whole duck. Wreck, did you uh, order a duck as well? Oh yeah. And she hands Wreck the duck, and just kind of continues to uh, dig into the basket and figuring out who ordered what, so she could pass it around. You hand the beans over to the <laughs> the tiefling, who immediately grabs this bowl of beans and starts just chowing down on it. Beans just all over her face. Those beans look tasty. And after uh, after handing out the food, she's going to give the Labrador a few pats, and she's going to add a tip into the basket for the dog to take back to the server. The dog's tail, still wagging, ducks its head down before you. Oh, what a cute puppy. Tess likes this tavern. The smell of food is probably getting to healthiest a little bit. Oh, here, healthiest. Here is a uh, a parchment with a uh, with a writing utensil. And Tess stands up and, and will take the parchment over to healthiest and kind of hand it over so he can order food. Oh, okay. 
has hands you this parchment and a, and a piece of paper. Um, Healthius, uh, the menu is at the at the back wall of the bar. It looks like this right here. I don't have a choice uh, other than to show it to everybody, so there it is. That's fine. Uh, who's going to ha help me buy my meal? <laughs> Tess has you covered. Just order whatever your heart desires. All right. So... Speaking of, another round of drinks, please. Ale, coming up. It's a house favorite, of course. She, uh, the bartender goes to work fixing your drinks and slides them down the bar. Sorry, we don't have the bar, the, uh, uh, we don't have Butch here bring drinks. You understand, um, he'll spill them. Oh, Tess understands and she'll go and collect the, the big cup so she can start to uh, divvy out drinks to those who are interested. As you approach the bar, the tiefling leans over to you. Now, I have to ask, I don't see a lot of tieflings around these parts, and today, two of them walk into my bar. What brings you into Mechardika, if you don't mind my asking? Oh, we are just, uh, travelers looking to explore the sea here soon. Well, if I had more travelers that looked like you coming through these doors, I'd be a mite happier. Tess kind of, uh, she, she blushes and looks down at, at her feet, um, nodding and saying, Tess thanks you for your, uh, hospitality. Tess is not used to seeing very, very many other tieflings. It is always nice to see another one who looks a lot like Tess. Likewise, she uh, kind of cracks this, uh, like a half grin at you. Your drinks and sets them down on the bar and you take them and back to the table. Tess places drinks before each of you. Have at it, my friends. Thank you. And Healthius writes on the parchment. And this is what he orders. <laughs> Soft cheese, blackberries, half chicken, dates, black beans, sunflower loaf, and apple pie. Before long, the dog uh, heads over to you um, with all of these items in, its, uh, in the basket that it's carrying. It sits right at your feet, wagging its tail and looking at you intently. Hmm. Well, isn't that a good boy? And I... Pat his head. Ian Fear will take a look at sort of the basket uh, and seeing all the food that's come to healthiest. Say, <clears throat> and I thought Tess had a healthy appetite. Yeah, for such a skinny thing, healthiest, you've got a big appetite. Oh yes. What else are you I hiding underneath I, those robes? I love my food. Uh, we'll wait to see my, under my robes for another time. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Giggity, 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 giggity. <laughs> Healthiest, please come join us. Okay, start over here. Valphalen, uh, Valphalen actually stands up, walks over to the table with the uh, with the older dwarf and the robed figure. Uh, do you mind? Uh, he gestures vaguely toward the chair and puts his hand on it. Ah. Uh, by all means, the dwarf says, and he pulls the chair out and pulls this chair over to the table where you can sit next to the tiefling. It's a good this, spot. This tiefling is one of the brigands that you had previously met that you guys hired to secure your passage. All right. All right. So these are one of the fast friends guys, right? Yes. So, um, Antarius looks over to you, Tess. Prior to your arrival here, I put out a, um, I put out a call to any who have their sea legs uh, to join us on our voyage. I have the payment already for them, so we don't have to worry about that. It's part of the thirty thousand that I mentioned 30, before. Thirty thousand. Yes, yeah, that's... Well, much... isn't that nice chunk of change? It's a ship. 
It's our <laughs> ship. But is it fully loaded? Oh yes, I, I made sure we have everything on board. In fact, I uh, took the liberty um, to gather us some cargo. We'll talk about that a little bit later. We'll be delivering that in Shopabin. Um, and we'll earn some of that back. At which point, I will uh, I'll present you with that money once we get paid. And I reach into the basket, take out the chicken, and just tear into it. Mm -hmm. Sounds the good. dog with an empty basket um, waits, and once you give him a pat on his head, he heads back over into his position next to the bar. Looking to Antarius, uh, Tess is going to say, kind of in a in a whispering tone, "Now, Antarius, this whole sea legs thing implies that Tess's legs are going to change in some way." Uh, can can you please explain? Oh no no no! Sea sea legs are they describe the experience of one who has been on on the sea. They're gonna change into a fish, a fish's tail. Healthiest. That's, that's uh, no, Tess does not want to look like part fish. Even Fear's gonna look to Tess and say, "Don't worry, calm down." He is simply trying to pull your leg away and turning you into a fish. She looks down at her legs inquisitively, seeing if anyone is actually trying to physically pull her legs, and then she uh, she takes a deep breath and then chugs the rest of her drink. Um, I'm going to say, my dear Tess, the expression just, the means, first sign. Uh, just means the ability to not lose your balance or get seasick while walking around on the sea. Uh, Tess, thanks you so much for your description, Ahara. Tess was really nervous her legs were going to change. Well, you're drinking like a fish. Yeah, uh, that's like the first sign. <sighs> Infier's going to look to Antares and say, have we come up with a name for her? <laughs> it's Tristan for Gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my mother! Oh, my mother. I couldn't have said it better myself, says Valphalen, glancing over to you, Ahara. Have you ever traveled the seas? I come from, from quite a ways. In my youth, uh, when I had to leave my village, I traveled by sea. I've I... been a few hundred years, perhaps. Maybe 120 years. I see, and he sort of chuckles and and downs some more of the ale in front of him. Uh, you can tell that he's he's starting to become inebriated. What brings you from Malia to Siuk, if you don't mind my asking? What, me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. He's looking at you. Uh, I had to leave. I long time ago, my, my village that I lived in was was ransacked by some... Um, and I'm going to kind of look around and, and just say, well, some some marauders, I suppose. Could you be... Speaking of the orcs of Jindu. Indeed. I've read much about the ongoing war there. It's one thing that we're going to have to be mindful of sailing to Shopabin. Does that does that bother you? I've killed orcs before. Valphalen suddenly glances over at you, Rek. On my... On my time after being captured and spending time with orcs, I was helped by a half-orc. Since then, I've seen 
quite a different side. Perhaps not all are the same as that marauding tribe that I've seen. The orcs of Jendu are much different than the orcs that we know here in Siuk. Most of them nomadic, much like our friend Rek here. There are also uh, those of Jendu who are much more warlike. They have brought about what we're referring to as the industrial era of their population. They create vast war machines, things Very unprecedented nice. in the world. I find them interesting, but also devastating and frightening. I myself was a wood elf. I was not a fan of them destroying my home to build these things. I find this intriguing. Were you... In Malia, from the group of elves who wishes to build cities in the trees, or the nomadic elves? I was, uh, I was amongst the nomadic elves, but the tribes were still very structured. Someday you and I must speak more of this. I would like to learn more of your culture, other than what I've read in books at the monastery. I was, I was only 40 when I left, but I will share what I remember. The elven longevity never ceases to amaze me. Haltius is finished with the half chicken goes in and starts eating the soft cheese and blueberries and dates. Valhalen, you notice, has been sort of just picking at his uh, his food here and there, and he's been gulping his ale in between s statements. He's got his pipe fully lit as well, and he's puffing on that. He seems to be multitasking just fine. Um, So at this point, we are out of time for the day. I hope that you guys will join us next time on New Delancia every Sunday from 5 to 7 p.m. here on the VG Punks channel. That's central time, of course. As well, please join us for the next episode of Deep Space Transmissions, which takes place at 6.30 p.m. on Saturday. Um, that is the Deep Space Transmissions radio show. Um, I hope to see you guys there. Uh, but until next time... This is VG Punks, your most gracious DM, and our slew of adventurers, and we are signing off. Keep a song in your heart. Do a barrel roll! Bye! Have a good night! Bye.